What is up guys? I'm pretty excited to make this video. This is going to be a very helpful video for anyone who's looking to learn about the individual parts that make up an FPV drone. It'll also be good for anyone that's looking to get into the hobby but doesn't want to break the bank. This is my 2021 budget build 5 inch freestyle drone and all of these parts cost less than $150. So let's go over all the parts that I got for my budget build drone. This is a steel 5 inch 220 millimeter uh, frame. This is gonna hold 5 inch props, so this is gonna be a nice little freestyle frame. And it feels pretty thick, so I'm excited to see how durable it is. Next we have some HQ freestyle prop. This is 5 by 4.3 by 3. We have two counterclockwise and two clockwise props in here. Next up, I'll show you the motors. So here we have a set of four Racer Star Racing Edition 2205 2300 kV brushless motors. These motors are capable of handling 2 to 4S, so it's perfect for this budget build. Next, let's talk about the FPV camera and the VTX. So for the budget build, I chose the Mini VTX 5848. This is a 48 channel, 5.8 GHz, so it's analog. Uh, VTX. This VTX is capable of 25 milliwatts, 100 milliwatts, and 200 milliwatts. So you'll get some decent range with it. Now for the camera, I've never used this, but I am a fan of Caddx products. This is the Caddx Ant Nano, and it comes with a bracket in there to adjust to the frame. So the Caddx Ant is a 1.8 millimeter, 1200 TVL. This is the 4x3 mode, and you can get this in black or silver. Now the last part is the flight controller and ESCs. So for this build, I actually decided on going with a stack, and this is the Mamba F405 Mini MK2 F4 flight controller. Now this is a stack, so this has the flight controller on top and ESC on bottom. So this is gonna allow us to have a nice clean build. So obviously the first thing you're gonna need to do is put your frame together. So here's the frame. This went together just about the same as every other frame I have. Up in the front here, you have the two little brackets that are gonna be holding on our FPV camera. We're gonna mount those in a little bit. But right now, all we're gonna focus on is getting our flight controller on here. So, depending on what size flight controller you have and what size frame you have, typically, frames will have holes to hold a certain size flight controller. This frame has holes that will hold a 30 by 30 flight controller, and I have a 20 by 20 flight controller. So as you can see, this flight controller won't mount on this frame. So what I've done is I just 3D printed this piece right here, and this is basically just gonna sit where a 30 by 30 flight controller would sit and instead, I can now mount my 20 by 20 flight controller right to this plate right here. So now all you need to do is figure out which direction your flight controller should be facing. So typically with Mamba stacks, I've noticed that they have the USB port on the right side of the drone. But another easy way to tell is I bet if we lift this sticker up, yep, right here, you see a little arrow that's gonna be pointing to the front of the drone. So since this is the front of the drone, we're gonna want our flight controller sitting right like that. Perfect. So now that the flight controller and ESC stack that I have is mounted to the frame, what I'm actually gonna do is disconnect the flight controller those wires off to the side and now what we can do is loosen up these screws and we're gonna actually get to mounting the motors and soldering the wires up to the ESC's underneath the flight controller here all right so this is where our ESC stack is going to be sitting so now what I'm gonna do is put everything off to the side so I don't lose it 
and we're gonna get our motors hooked up. Since the motors do have arrows on them, it'll just make it easier with putting props on. So I am gonna put them on in the order that they should be according to the motor itself. So a good rule of thumb when you're building a quad is right here you have motor one, motor two, motor three, and motor four. Motors one and four will always spin clockwise and motors three and two will always spin counterclockwise. So here, if you're looking at the arrows, they're pointing in this direction. So they're spinning clockwise. Each motor came with its own set of screws. So now all I'm gonna do is secure those to the frame. Now that you have the motors all mounted up, it's time to solder these wires to the ESC. Whether you have an all-in-one ESC like this, or if you have the individual ESCs, you're gonna have three pads on a board or on the ind individual ESC that are dedicated to the motor wires. And it doesn't matter which wires go to which pad. I like to keep it nice and tidy and just keep the three that are in line, in line on the board but you can swap them. You can take these wires and twirl them up if you like how that looks. I don't, I'm gonna keep them nice and tidy. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I start just soldering these onto the board is actually just measure out how long of a wire I need to reach the And then I'm gonna give it a little bit more and then I'll cut it and I'll solder it to the board. So I'll do one of these on camera, I'll do motor one. So since we know that this is the length of the wire, we know that the wire is gonna be sitting like this. I'm gonna have it run right along the side and right to the pads, right like that. So I'm gonna cut these wires right about where my thumb is. Now what you can do is just rip the tubing off of the end, just do a little tiny piece you can use wire cutters, but you basically only want that much wire showing. So do that to all the wires. So these wires are ready now. So now you need to get your soldering iron and we are going to put a little bit of solder on each of these pads. So there's three on each side. So you have a total of 12 pads, but all you wanna do is just take your soldering iron, heat this pad up, Put some solder on there and that's going to get it, make it easier to connect the wires. So do that to all of these pads. Something else that we can do while we're doing these motor wires is actually put our cable on. So I have this XT60 cable that I'm gonna use. It, the flight controller that I bought does come with wires, but this one's just ready to go. I am gonna use the capacitor that came with it. So I'm gonna trim these down a little bit. You can tell which side's which because this side has a negative on it and this side doesn't have anything. So this is gonna go right like that. With this temporarily bent up, I can, it gives me a little, a little bit better access so I can put the XT60 connector on there. I'm gonna pre-tin these, makes it a lot easier to put onto the board when you have solder already on the wires. So the solder that I'm putting on right now is gonna be for the battery and for the capacitor. Those definitely aren't the prettiest solder joints that I've done, but they'll work. So 
now I'm just gonna bend the capacitor back over. Ooh, that's hot. I'm going to bend the capacitor back over to where it is going to stay, which is right about there. I'm gonna spread these wires out a little bit because I think I can get it down a little bit more. Right like that, that's fine. So now with the battery lid all set, we can go back to the motors. So here's motor one, which is the one that we were working on. And just like the battery leads, I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on each end, and then I'm gonna get it on the board. To keep this nice and clean, all I'm gonna do is have the wires run straight out of the motor, flat, and then this motor that's on the far left is gonna to go to the far left pad. The motor, the wire that's in the middle is gonna to go to the middle pad and the wire on the right is gonna to go to the right pad. Then once we're done, we can take these wires, put a zip tie around them and secure them right down here. And in the end, it will look pretty clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that to the rest of these motors. So I'll fast forward to what that looks like right now. There we go, this is looking pretty clean. So we have the motors all hooked up to the ESCs. So now all that's left is putting the flight controller on top and then hooking a couple things up to that. And I'm gonna take this and this is front, so it's gonna be sitting right like that. Stick that right through there. Take the two screws that we just removed, put them right through the top. So now I'm just going to secure this to the board. Reconnect this. So now the only things that we have left to connect are the camera, the VTX, and whatever receiver you're gonna use. I didn't include this in the build because this is gonna vary from build to build. I have this RXSR laying around, so I'm gonna install this on this drone. You can use TBS Crossfire, you can use, you know, you can use a variety of different receivers on this. I run FR Sky, so I'm just gonna use this. So we have the VTX and the camera. Now when you're getting ready to hook this stuff up, you're gonna to wanna to look at the diagram for the board. Now, whatever board you get, it should come with an instruction booklet or at least something telling you the pinout of the flight controller. So, this camera has a pretty good input. It requires 3.7 to 26 volts, I believe. So, we can power the camera off of a five volt pad. So here we can see that this goes to a five volt. We have five volt ground and video in. So those are the pads that we're gonna want right here. So I'm gonna put some solder on those three. And for this specific video transmitter, this requires seven to 27 volts. So I'm not gonna get enough power if I use this five volt pad that they have going to their video transmitter. So I'm gonna have to find a pad that says VCC or battery power. And that's right down in this corner. So I'm gonna have to power the VTX off of these two pads and have the video out wire run straight to the VTX. So I'll use this power and ground and then the TX3 and video out over there. And then receiver we can figure out afterwards, but I'm just gonna put some solder on those three pads up there. These two right here and then these two right here. So since I'm using an RXSR, this has S-Bus, and then it requires four to 10 volts, and it has a ground. So I'm gonna be able to actually use the 
five volt that we didn't use for the video transmitter because that also has the S bus right underneath it. So I'm gonna solder up the ground five volt and S bus pads and that will be for our receiver. So now we just gotta get it soldered up. First I'll do the camera. So since this flight controller doesn't have a port that fits this, so I can just plug it in, I am gonna have to solder on these wires. Both ends are the same, so it doesn't matter which end you cut off. I'm gonna take a tiny piece of the tubing off. I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on the end just so that I can attach it to the pads a little easier. Actually, it looks like this yellow wire is spilling over onto this other pad. I'm not sure what that is, but it will definitely cause interference in the video. So just double check to look for stuff like that. That pad is a five volt, so that might've ruined my camera had I plugged it in. And that's not the kind of thing that would show up on a smoke stopper. So that's our camera. I'm gonna get the camera set up because I do have a bracket that I'm putting it in so they can fit this frame. Aw, it's so cute. So I'm gonna slide this into its adapter. I'm gonna find these pieces. Now these are the pieces that I haven't put in yet, but they sit right in the frame, right like that. So when the camera's sitting like that, it's gonna go together right there. So the camera came with a bunch of screws. I'm sure one of these screws will work, hopefully. So that's where the camera is going to be sitting. So here's VTX. Since this is 20 by 20, you could always put this right on top of your stack and just keep it all nice and tidy in this, but free up a little space because I have it. I'm going to just put the VTX right back here underneath the power cable. I'm gonna get a couple little standoffs for this. There's actually a couple extra ones that came with the flight controller, so I'm probably gonna use those. But this is gonna sit right back here. Here we have a cable that they included with the VTX. So this is gonna hook up to the flight controller on the pads that we already pre-tinned. So I'm not even gonna trim this because I like the amount of slack that they gave me. I'm just gonna take the wires as is and just hook it up to the pads. And then this one. Now I can grab our video cable and our TX or RX. And those ones are gonna go right in here.
All right, so with those hooked up, I'm going to just try and get this to be nice and coiled up. And then we can plug it in to our VTX. So like I mentioned earlier, the flight controller stack that I got came with a bunch of extra little rubber grommets. So I'm actually gonna use those for the VTX. Here's a little tip for you. When you're installing these grommets, they can be very difficult. You can't just push it in and that's that. I've found that the easiest way to do this is actually get some dental floss, put it through one of the holes like this, open it up, put the grommet in like that, and then just pull it through. Done. Now with those grommets on there, I can secure the VTX down. I'm gonna run the power cable over it. So it sits right like that. So I'm gonna go find some screws and secure that to the frame. And always secure your antenna. This is the antenna that came with it. I'm not gonna be using this one. This is basically just a UFL2 SMA connector, so I can put one of my standard antennas on this, and it will help with range as well. So I'll connect this end right to here, and then just make sure you have your antenna on the other side. solder the wires onto my receiver. This could be different for you depending on what receiver you're using. I'm, like I said, I'm using an RXSR, so get five volt down here, ground right underneath, and then S bus is right here in the middle. Now these wires are a little long. I like typically having the receiver hang out up here. And that is pretty much our drone. That's everything. Now it's just a matter of kind of tidying it up and making it look nice. So here's the drone in its final form. I'm very happy with how this came out. I came across a couple 3D printable files for this drone. Here's a little antenna holder that I found. I'll leave a link to this in the description. I also found some landing gear. I have these on each arm, and that's just gonna protect the bottom from uh, scraping on the cement when you land. And another thing that I did was I ran the antenna for the RXSR right along the front right arm and it's held on by just a zip tie and some heat shrink. So that'll keep it out of the props, keep it nice and secure out in the open so that you get good range. I think if you had a couple extra bucks to spare, maybe put it into an antenna like I did. This is an upgraded antenna than what came with the VTX. The VTX comes with this antenna, which isn't bad, but you're not going to get too good range out of it. So I have a bunch of these antennas laying around, so I just got a UFL to SMA connector, printed this thing, and now I have a little bit better range with this antenna. Um, so that's like if you have an extra 10 bucks laying around, you can do that upgrade. If you have an additional 20 to $30 to spend on the drone, put it into the motors. I think that's something that you'll notice a big difference with. Otherwise, I'd say every other component in here is pretty decent for the price that I paid. So yeah, that's pretty much the build. Now all that's left is going into beta flight, doing some slight tuning, and then I'll post some flight footage. All right, so let's go ahead and launch beta flight. 
So this looks good. So next I'm gonna scroll down to ports and I have the VTX on UART3. So I'm gonna scroll over here to peripherals and I'm gonna change this to VTX IRC Tramp. If you're using a VTX with Smart Audio, you would select this one. Um, the one I'm using is IRC Tramp, so I'll select that. And Serial RX on UART1 looks good because I'm just using the SBUS pad. So I'll hit save and reboot. Now I'll scroll down to configuration. So the board that I'm using is actually capable of D-Shot. So I'm gonna change this from one shot 125 down to D-Shot 300. It's capable of D-Shot uh, 600, but I'm gonna just put it at 300. This all looks good. You can give it a crap name. S-Bus, that looks good. I'm gonna turn on telemetry and that looks good. I usually keep these off because I hate it when the drone just beeps when I turn my controller off. Otherwise, all this stuff looks good. But all these settings look good, so I'm gonna hit save and reboot. And, and now comes the test to see if the receiver connects to the drone. So when I plug a battery into the drone, it should automatically connect to the QX7. I already bound the QX7 to the receiver and I can see that it works. So now it's just a matter of getting the stick commands into Betaflight. So when I plug, so when I plug this battery in, it should just pop up. I'll move the sticks around, and it looks good. So it looks like everything is showing up. So this all looks perfect. So I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna scroll down to modes, and this is where we can configure our our arm switch. So on the controller, since you can see that the switch has worked, you're just gonna go add range. Arm is for when the propellers are gonna start spinning and it's on auto. So whenever you flick the switch that you want to be the arm switch, it'll automatically select that aux channel. So aux one is the one that I'm gonna use for arm and that's in the up position. So I'm gonna move the slider to be right like that. And you do this with any mode that you want. I don't usually use angle mode, but I do usually keep it on a switch. So in this case, I'm gonna put it on aux three when it's all the way up. I don't use horizon mode. If you are using a GPS, this is where you could control the fail safe. I'm gonna use the beeper. So I'm gonna hit range and then I have this switch. So I'm gonna position that right there. Camera control, flip over after crash, I always use. Launch control. Those are pretty much all the modes that I use. So hit save. And you can actually hit this and it'll hide all the modes that you aren't using. So now you can come to the motors tab and this is where you can test each motor to see if it's spinning the right direction or if it spins at all. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. So to test the direction of the motors, you can take a prop, put it on the motor and don't have any nuts on it and just slowly spin it and you can see which way the motor is actually spinning. So I have a prop on motor one right now, so I'm just gonna slowly spin it and make sure that it's spinning clockwise and it is, so that motor is good. Now if I move the prop to motor two, I'll be able to see. Now I can see that motor two is actually also spinning in the clockwise motion. So I'm gonna have to reverse motor two in BL Heli. We'll test out motor three. Motor three is also clockwise. So I'll have to reverse motors two and three. And now we'll test motor four. And motor four is clockwise as well. So all the motors are clockwise. So we're gonna have to reverse motors two and three in BL Heli. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm going to unplug the drone.
and now you can go over and start configuring your OSD. So this is where you're going to see your alerts and your flight statistics and everything and everything that's going to pop up in your goggles. So let's save and now it's time to configure the video transmitter. Now you can only configure the video transmitter when a battery is connected. So what you want to do is since this is IRC Tramp, we're going to go over to GitHub and I'm going to find the VTX table that corresponds with IRC Tramp. So I just saved it. So I'm going to go load from file and then it should just populate right here. So this VTX does not have these power levels. It has 25, 100, and 200. So I'm gonna change this to three profiles. That looks good. I, like I said, I like having my drones on R3. So I'm gonna come under here. We're gonna put this on race band, channel three, and let's save. So this is all looking good. So now all that's really left is changing the direction of motors two and three. So I'm gonna disconnect. I'm gonna keep the battery plugged in because you need the battery plugged in for BL Heli S. I'm gonna close beta flight and I'm gonna open BL Heli configurator. So this is pretty much just like beta flight. Select where your device is plugged in, hit connect. It's good, read setup. And then everything pops up here. So like I said, we got we got to reverse motors two and three. So we're gonna go under this, hit reversed, hit reversed, and right setup. So now that's all set. You can change the volume of the beeps. I'm gonna keep them just how they are. All right, so now we're pretty much all set with BL Heli. You can go under flash firmware and see if there's an update that's newer than 16.7. I know 16.7 is pretty new. There might be 16.8 or 16.9 out, but I'm just gonna keep it on 16.7 because that's on all my quads and it works fine. So I'm gonna disconnect and we are all set. So now we should be ready to throw the props back on, go outside and go for a test flight. So in the flight footage you're about to see, I'm going to be flying this drone with this battery. This is a Saipom 1300 milliamp 4S battery. So this is a four cell battery with an XT60 connector. This is capable of 100C and you can buy these on Amazon. I think it's about $40 for a pack of two. I had never heard of Saipom before they reached out to me and they actually sent me a couple of these batteries to test out and do a review on. And I gotta say, I'm actually pretty impressed as far as Amazon batteries go. This is gonna become my new go-to for my 4S drones just because of the price plus the size. And I'm not running into any issues with this. They have some good juice in them and I'm just a big fan of these batteries. So highly recommended. The flight footage you're about to see is using this battery.
So yeah, very happy with this drone, very happy with how it came out and how it flies. Obviously it needs a little bit of a tune, but then again, what drone doesn't after you build it? Um, I think if you had a couple extra bucks to spend, maybe buy an upgraded set of motors. Otherwise, I think this is a pretty solid $150 drone build. So if you learned something or you got something to say, you got a suggestion, leave it in the comment section below because I always love to hear from you. If you liked the video, smash on that like button for me, it'd mean the world. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell, that way there you can be kept up with all of my latest content. Thanks. Whatever, dude.